The sort method of arrays allows the passing in of a callback function to help determine the sort. This is a great feature for many situations, but in this tutorial, we will look at how it can help us sort an array of objects. Welcome to another tutorial from All Things JavaScript, where we help bridge the gap between novice and expert. To be notified about new tutorials, make sure to click the bell button and subscribe. Also, check out the discount links to all my courses that I've included in the description of this tutorial. In order to sort an array of objects, we need to force the sort on an object's property, whichever property we determine. The sort method of arrays allows us to pass in a callback function, and we can use that callback function to access the property and aid in the sort. Let's say we have these objects in an array that we want to sort. Pretty simple, basically first name, last name, and a score. And we have four objects. First, what I'd like to do is sort these by the last name. So we'll need to access that property. And also, I'd like to change the case so to make sure that we are sorting correctly. So I'll convert them all to lower case. So let's look at how we would do that. Now, first off, what if we just did array.sort? And that was all. If we save that, let's see what that does for us. If I look at that array and open it up so I can see the objects, it is in the same order. Stephen, Lynette, Andrew, Annika. If I jump back here, Stephen, Lynette, Andrew, Annika. So it didn't really change it. And that's why we need to specify what we want to sort on. Now, the sort method of arrays allows the passing in of a callback function. Now, this callback function accepts two parameters. And these are two elements from the array. And it will cycle through the array, accepting two elements. And basically, what we need to do in this callback function is we need to return a negative number, a positive number, or zero. So if the first argument here, if the first argument should appear before the second argument, then we return a number less than zero, a negative number. If the first argument should appear after, we return a positive number. And if they're equal, we return a zero. So that's what we need to do in this function. So let's go ahead and set that up. Now I'm going to use an if statement, but I'm going to use the shortened if. I'm not going to use the curly braces because after the if statement, I'm going to return something, either a negative number, a positive number, or a zero. And since I'm returning something from a function, it will end that function at that time. So I don't normally recommend doing this compressed version of if statements, but it works really well when you're returning something because you know nothing else can happen. You know you're not going to come in and modify that if statement, add another statement, and forget to do the curly braces. And that's the main reason I wouldn't do it. But let's, let's take a look at that. So first, I want to check the last name of whatever is passed in and see if it's less than the last name of the second thing that's passed in. If it is less than, then I'm going to return a negative one. So it would be something like this, a dot last name, and I'm going to convert it to lowercase. Just want to convert the case so we make sure we're comparing apples and apples. If that is less than b dot last name to lowercase, then we'll return a negative one. So this is the shortened version of an if statement. If I only have one statement after the if statement, I don't need the curly braces. Now, like I said, normally I would recommend putting in the curly braces because you may come in later and add another statement and forget to add the curly braces. But this is a situation where I wouldn't do that, where I'm returning a value and so I know it ends at that point. So that's the first if statement. If this one doesn't 
result in true and return a negative one, then it will go to the next statement. The function will continue. Next if statement, I'm gonna check. Last name again, converting it to two or low, to lowercase, and it, this time if it's greater than b dot last name to lowercase. Now, if that is true, then we want to return a one. Once again, if a should come before b, we return a number less than zero. If a should come after b, we return a number greater than zero. If they were equal, we return zero. So that's the last thing I would do, return zero. So if this condition doesn't result in true, it'll go to this statement. Check that condition. If it doesn't result to true, it will do this last return statement. Anytime it encounters a return statement, the function ends. It doesn't continue to the next line. All right, let's see if this works for us. I'm going to go ahead and save that. Refresh. Let's check that array and open it up so we can see the objects. And look at the last name, see if it's sorted by last name. Hancock, Jorgensen, Turner, Wilson. So first, second, third, and fourth. So it did sort it for us. All right, now let's do one more before we finish here. Let's do a sort, and let's assume we wanted to sort by the score. The score that they have in the object. Let me do a couple of returns there so we can see this a little better. And I'm going to do dot sort and set up my callback function. Declare it anonymously. Now, this is a little bit of an interesting case. Remember, if the first should come before the second, we return a negative number. So we can do that really simply this way. Look how easy this is, minus b dot score. Basically, if b is larger than a, it's going to return a negative number, which means a should come before it, if we're sorting from lowest to highest, which is what I'm doing. I would just reverse those if I wanted to go the other direction. but. If it returns a negative number, it'll mean A comes before it. If it returns a positive number, that would mean A is greater than B, and so we would return a positive number because B needs to come before it. If they are the same number, they will return zero, thus indicating that they are equal. Save that. Let's take a look at it, see how that worked for us. Seventy-one, eighty-two, ninety, and a hundred. And once again, if we wanted to go the other direction, we would just reverse those. So the fact that sort allows us to pass in a callback function to determine the sort order makes it much easier to sort on an object. Now, before we're done here, please hit the like button. And remember, I've provided discount links to all my courses in the description section. If you'd like to become a patron of this channel, there are additional benefits to certain levels. You can follow a link in the description for that. You can also contribute by visiting my website. If you haven't subscribed yet, hit that button or click the circle link on the left, the one with my face. Also click the bell button to be notified about new releases. I release a new tutorial each week. You can click the video link in the center to access another tutorial right away or click the link on the right to visit my website, allthingsjavascript.com for a complete list of tutorials and courses. Thanks for watching.